Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Look at this big box. It's very exciting. It's a joy of unboxing today and we're going to unbox everything inside this large cardboard box. What's inside I hear you ask? Well it's Folklore The Affliction by Greenbrier Games and this is the Mystic Pledge which is the largest pledge you could get in their recent second edition Kickstarter campaign for this game. It's a big adventure game. It looks very exciting. I'm really excited to open this box. I'm especially excited to open it with you. So let's get to it. And wow, check it out. There's so much stuff. It absolutely fills the video screen. I'm going to have to pan back. Ugh, look at all that. We've got a core set in here. We've got an expansion here. We've got player mats, we've got extras, we've got a big miniatures pack, we've got extra ghosts, extra monsters, terrain pieces, an oversized world map, some character sheets, some extra adventures. Wow, there's so much stuff for folklore, the affliction in this pledge. It's very exciting. So settle down, pour yourself a drink, relax, because we're going to go through all this stuff one by one and check it out so you can see how good it is and then go out and buy it yourself. Of course, any good unboxing worth its salt starts with the corset. Here it is, Folklore, The Affliction, designed by Will Donovan and Nick Blaine. And it's a very nice cover. It's very evocative. It looks very kind of Van Helsing, Grimm's Fairy Tales, dark kind of Eastern European ghosts and goblins and adventure with a bit of fantasy thrown in. Right up my street. I love that kind of stuff. And as you can see, there's a lot inside, but let's stop looking at the back. Let's look inside because let's face it, inside the box is where all the magic happens. Rip off that shrink wrap. Here we go. Oh, it's a rule book. Oh, and it's a big, lovely rule book. Look at that. Hmm. Folklore, the affliction, very gothic, very evocative. And, of course, the Esoteric Order of Gamers will be making a rules summary for this game. In fact, it was even one of the stretch goals of the campaign, so I can't get out of it now. I've got to make it. And I hope all you players of this game will find it useful. And I've just realised I've got a huge job ahead of me, because look at all this stuff. Whew! Wow, adventuring, encounters, it's pretty comprehensive. There's a lot happening here. Nice to see they've highlighted some rules there. But, there you go. Whew. Then we've got a story journal. Adventure Begins. Here it is, the story journal. And this is quite a story-based game. There's a whole campaign, there's a whole adventure story going through, and in fact, in this pledge, there's some extra adventures as well. Uh, we won't look through that because it's all spoilers, but as you can see, heaps and heaps of interesting content. Now we've got cardboard. Good old cardboard. What would we do without cardboard? And I'm happy to see it's pretty thick cardboard too. I do like thick cardboard for my counters. Nice looking counters, very dark, which is good because it's a very dark kind of game and a dark theme. Oh, a lot going on there. Descriptive stuff. More counters. Nice quality. Oh, can they pop out very easily, you can see. Now, this comes with heaps of standees, so the core set, you use standees for all these characters. I've got a box full of miniatures, which I can use instead of these standees, so I'll never actually use these. But, if you are using the standees, they look very nice. They've got illustrations on them, as you can see. Now we've got some boards, and these are obviously our adventuring boards. Now, these are on a thinner cardboard, I see, which is slightly unusual. But that does mean you get lots more of them, I guess. And the artwork looks very good. There we go. These are all the locations, no doubt, for the encounters with all the beasties and goblins and greeblies and horrors you will meet during a campaign. These actually would be very handy for use in role-playing games as well. Just as one-off encounter areas. Another one. So heaps of that. Well, we do have a thick board here. What's this for? Oh, this is the world map. This is the world we'll be operating in. Oh, look very nice indeed. 
Euro Trusk, Osterlink, Wayland Point, Ashland Spires. Hmm. It's very nice. Well, there's more we got here. These look like little character booklets for each of the characters. Arcanist. As you can see, it's very influenced by role playing games. It's probably as close as a role playing game you're going to get in a board game. Witch Hunter. I just watched the film Solomon Kane again last night. It's a good little fantasy film if you haven't seen it. Very much in this kind of style. Now we've got a little, uh, what's this? Ghost Point Tracker. Power Tracker. Little tracking things. Left Foe Tracker. Left Foe Tracker. Mm. Top Foe Tracker. Okay, I don't know how that works. Uh, we've got some stands for the standees. Some dice. Looks like some ten-sided and four-sided dice. Oh, and the percentile dice in there as well. Some little white counters and a single meeple. And a bunch of cards, large cards and smaller cards. Is that all? Yep, that's it. Let's have a look at these cards. And here we go. What kind of adventuring game would it be without heaps and heaps of cards? Look at them all. Here we've got some large cards which appear to be our sort of character type cards. Um, we've got Arcanist, Archaeologist, Avenging Madman, Exorcist, Telepath, Witch Hunter. Mm, and not only that, if you die in this game, you become a ghost. Ha! Excellent. I'm really looking forward to playing a ghost. Nice little mechanic that. Got those. We've got a heap of bad guys. Lots and lots of things to encounter and kill and no doubt be killed by. Bat swarms, dark oaks, decaying dead, flesh-eating ghouls, gargoyles, highwaymen. Well, you get the idea. I don't want to give all these away. Some of them are kind of surprises, but there's heaps and heaps in there. And they have a flip side as well. So skirmish. There seems, hmm, seems to be a skirmish side. That's interesting. So lots and lots of variety in our monsters. We've got some really creepy looking things here which probably have to do with particular storylines. And they've just got that very evocative back. Love the, the artwork, the design, looks great. We've got some reference sheets here. Adventuring, skirmishing, encounters, statuses, town services. There you go. We've got a deck of road events. I love this little book style here. This is this illustration is great. And as you can see, the inside is like a little book as well with road event in the middle and day and night sides. Nice touch. Like the design. Very nice. We've got here off road events. Not a book, but all oh, double sided there and a lot going on. Again, set up like a little book with a, a bookmark in the middle, which I love. That's great. Next, a deck of ability cards. And these are obviously special abilities that your characters could get, and they look to be uh, specifically made for the different characters. Or perhaps there's some general ones as well, but certainly a lot of variety there. Raging Throw. Quantum Telepathy. Whew. A lot going on there. A little deck of companion animals. And companion militia as well. Here they are. All illustrated. I love to see. Great little character illustrations there. Very nice. And these are the animals as well. Golden Canary. Who doesn't need a golden canary, especially if you're going down a gold mine? Prayer, prayer cards, a little bit of praying to help you on the way. Here we go, exercise evil, heaven's light, purify body, soul cleanse. Some rituals, after you've done some praying, do some ritualizing. 
And again, illustrated. Great stuff. These are items, actually. Whoops, no, I've got some items in the ritual deck. Get over there. Here we go, rituals. Arcane Ward, Energy Flux, Enthrall. Great. Some artifacts. Oh, and a tarot deck as well. Didn't see those hiding under there. So, artifacts we have again illustrated. Burial Cloak. Like the design, like how the uh, image is on this dark background and it's all divided up into little areas of information. Great stuff. Tarot. Nice little mini tarot deck. Don't know what that does, but I like the idea. And finally, a huge deck of items. Check them all out. Wow. This is great and all illustrated. Wonderful stuff. This is looking really good. I'm really looking forward to playing this. It's going to be great fun. Okay, that's the core set. Let's get on to some of the extra stuff that came with this pledge. Starting with the Dark Tales expansion. Yes, it's another whole box. A whole box of stuff. And of course, there's more adventures in here. If I look at this, uh, nine more stories featuring new systems for dungeon exploration and open world adventure. Six new archetypes. Continue your campaign with existing characters, if you wish, as well. Um, a whole new story. This is very much a role-playing game, and you're going to, if you really get into it, want to have extra stories. And here they are in Dark Tales. So let's have a look inside the box. Rip off the shrink crab. There we go. And first we have the story journal to Dark Tales. So this is the second story journal. And it's a perfect bound book this time. Glossy pages. And wow, look at all this stuff. How do these people find the time to create all this stuff? It always amazes me. I've got a full-time job and I think I'd love to make a game one day. But... Look at the amount of work that's involved. It would take forever. Anyway, very impressive. There it is, Story Journal 2. We've got the standees, of course. If you don't have miniatures, you can use the standees. There we go. We've got some more counters. Nice thick cardboard again. There we go. And it looks like some more encounter locales. Oh, look, we've got smaller pieces here, so you can make a sort of tile arrangement. These look like individual little rooms here. Um, again, very good for role-playing games as well. Look at all these little rooms. There we go, little dungeon rooms. Oh, more rooms. Yep. Lots going on there. Ooh, look, the fiery pit. There's a mummy, more fiery stuff. There we go. Uh, oh, look, yep. Yeah. Underground areas. Huge variety of fighting locations. Oh, a sewer. Got to have a sewer. Village. More sewer. Oh, yep, come back. Oh. Lots of different places to fight an adventure. Wow. This is a lot of stuff. This is a lot more than in the base set, even. Wow. Okay. Some standy uh, plastic stands. Some cards. Let's have a look at these cards. And here we go. Heaps more cards. First, we've got some more characters. A butcher. A courtesan. An illusionist. A scientist, a slayer, a woodsman, a lot of variety there. We've got heaps more nasties, wretched hag, possessed, demon spawn, hand of death. Oh, it just goes on and on. So many horrible things to encounter. My goodness. And of course, the character cards for those aforementioned characters. We've got... More road event cards. You've seen those in the core set. We've got off-road events. We've got a pack of abilities. That's a variety there. We've got heirlooms. That's new. 
Haven't seen heirlooms before. <laughs> Rabbit's foot. Classic. Ether. Book of prayers. Great stuff. Items. Artifacts. Companions. Militia and companions. Animal. All there. Whole lot of extra content in this set for a whole lot of extra adventures. Wow, there's just stuff here that would keep you going forever. But wait, there's more! Okay, we're going to start ploughing through some of the extra stuff in the Mythic Pledge now. And we've got even more adventures. Wow, I've got days and days and days, weeks, months worth of adventuring stuff. We've got a bookmark. Who needs a bookmark? Everyone needs a bookmark. We've got Adventure Creation Kit. Now, I had a little flip through this before, and it's... An astonishing amount of content. There's a whole lot of stuff here for creating your whole adventures. It really is like a whole role-playing game in a box, really. And uh, with this stuff, you could go on and make your own adventures even past all the stuff in the core set and the expansions. So, pretty impressive. There's a lot of stuff in here. Plus, we've got St Story Journal 3, Nightmare Tales. So, after you've played the core set, and the expansion you could get into Story Tales 3. Wow. Yep, no shortage of content. There's that. Then we've got these fancy mats, uh, sort of character mats here, and they're thin mouse mat material. Let's have a look. I've got five of these. Oh, and they're very nice. Look, it's a mouse mat stuff. Thin, and this is presumably where you can put all your character information and cards, like a character sheet. Very cool. Nice little extra for the game. There's five of those. Here I've got an oversized world map. And wow, it is oversized, all right? Look at the size of this. Um, let me just open this up on the floor, and then I can show you what it looks like. And here it is. And if you're wondering how big that is, here's my foot for scale. I've got a pretty big foot, size... 10 to 11 so it's a very large map and again of this mouse map material um, probably needs a bit of flattening we need to put some stuff on it to flatten it out but this would look great on the tabletop as you're playing the game right i'll leave that on the floor to flatten and in the meantime look at some of the miniatures we've got the ghost miniatures pack and the miniatures box set let's have a look at the box set first so this should replace all of the standees that are in the core set and possibly the expansion set too, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. 77 miniatures in here. Wow, there's a lot. Look at all this! Holy moly! There's a lot of painting to be done. A lot of miniatures. And it looks like some fire markers in there as well. Um, let's... Uh, get some of these out and have a look at them. And here they are folks, the 77 miniatures that you get in the miniatures box set for Folklore the Affliction. These look great. Look, I'm not going to say they're Games Workshop quality, they're definitely not that kind of level, but they're fantastic board game pieces. Uh, the plastic is a little bit bendy, you might have to do a bit of a hot water treatment on some of the bent bits, and there's some scale variability as you can see, slight differences in scale. But, you know, they're fun pieces, and the uh, detail is pretty good. Um, I think these will be great fun. I'm not going to put a huge amount of effort into painting these up. I'll just do quick paint jobs um, to enhance my game of folklore. Um, but it's a pretty good set, and certainly a fantastic alternative to using the standees in the set. There's some pretty cool monsters in here. This little demon guy. He's kind of falling over his face, but he's... <laughs> Very evocative. This one as well, the Abomination. This looks like Grendel out of uh, Beowulf, the film version. And um, oh, we've got a sort of succubus type creature here. So they're a little bit cartoony, but they're pretty cool. And we've got this Abomination book thing, again with the tentacles coming out of it. And of course we've got all the characters. Here's the archaeologist. And... I don't know who this guy is, but he looks like some kind of rabid religious fanatic. And that guy needs a bit of hot water treatment on the 
sword. But there are our characters. So a huge variety of things happening here. We've got vampires and spirits and oh this one's pretty cool too. Check that one out. That's a beauty actually. That's really like that one. So there you go, the miniatures pack for folklore. Heaps. Then we've got the ghost miniatures pack. Now, as I mentioned before, if your character dies in this game, you don't get chucked out of the game, you in fact become a ghost. And these are all the character miniatures in the game, but in blue translucent plastic, so you can look like a ghost on the tabletop, which I think is a lovely touch. Oh, very cool. Look at these. Oh, look at that. What a perfect ghost. They look great. Here's the ghost version of the archaeologist. And the great thing about these figures is that you don't have to paint them. Yay! These are super cool. It's an incredible extravagance, but really nice to have once your character turns into a ghost to whip out this kind of figure. Very fun. There they are. A pack of ghosts. But wait, the miniatures don't stop there. We've got a terrain pack here as well. Here's some lovely dungeon type doorways. Always a good thing to have as part of your collection because these kind of things can be used in other games as well. Any other dungeon delving game, it's always good to have some doorways on hand. Maybe a gravestone or two. And these strange looking figures. Not sure what these are. This looks like that horrific book thing that I saw a card for before. And these seem to be some kind of scarecrow creature I don't know but yep whole pack of those so that's a nice extra pack of bits and pieces a couple more miniatures packs we've got a colossal dark oak oh it's big and it's made up of a lot of bits wow it really is colossal there's the main piece I'm not even sure how all these bits go together, but it looks very impressive, nicely detailed, there's a lot going on. Here's roughly what it looks like when it's finished. That's a frightening thing to bring out on the board in any game, I'm sure. And then the AME or AIM, the Corrupted Affliction Pack, Champions of Hara, I don't know what any of this means. But I'm sure once I start reading, it'll all become clear. Aha! Here it is! Aim. Okay. And there's some cards to go with it. And this is the miniature itself. There it is. Very bizarre. I don't even know what's going on. There's a female torso and a snake-like, bug-like, dragon-like tail thing and ugh, it's horrible. Well folks, we've almost finished with our look at all these folklore goodies. There's a couple of um, pads here. We've got character record pads and encounter record pads. Uh, but those, we've got tracker card pack, five of these. These are nice little trackers. I think in the main game you have little cards which you can slide up and down on either side of the card. In this one you can use these little trackers. Then we've got um, several card packs. An equipment pack. There we go. A uh, couple of decks of extra equipment that you can take on your adventures. We've got world events. These add random seasons, festivals, environmental and town effects to the game. There's a deck of those. World events. And finally, crafting and recipes card deck, which adds crafting recipes and new items to Folklore the Affliction, allowing you to create augmentations and unique items. So very much a sort of video game kind of extra there, bit of crafting. And then finally we have this nice little pouch, lovely little pouch there, and in there we've got what I presume is a first player token, a leader token, and look at that! It's beautiful, it's made of metal, it's engraved, it's quite stunning. Well, as you can no doubt tell, I am very impressed with Folklore the Affliction. There's a whole lot of stuff here. This is 
pretty much like role playing in a box. Um, it's got, for me, a kind of gritty, grim Warhammer fantasy role play feel, with, as I said, a bit of Van Helsing, Grimm's Fairy Tales, Eastern European feel, a bit of Dracula, werewolf, classic monster stuff, um, all thrown into this uh, very impressive looking package, and I'm really looking forward to trying it out. I'm going to have a lot more stuff about folklore on the website in the months to come. I'm definitely going to be doing a rules summary. Um, I might try and do a playthrough as well, and uh, just look out for other stuff on this game, because this is the kind of stuff that the Esoteric Order of Gamers is, is all about, which is really thematic, immersive, role-playing type gaming. Looks fantastic. So, well done, Greenbrier Games. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing of the Mythic Pledge for the second edition Kickstarter campaign. And look out for more folklore stuff. In the meantime, orderofgamers.com is where the Esoteric Order of Gamers lives. I'm also on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash esotericorder. Go and check it out. And check out all the stuff that I make. I hope you enjoy it. Good gaming, folks. See you next time.